Mr. President, welcome to the program. Can I first ask you about the issue of Ibrahim Bakrawi, who you say you alerted the West to and in fact deported. Can you tell me exactly what you did and how you knew him? On June 11, 2015, Al Bakrawi entered the Republic of Turkey through the city of Antalya. And on July the 14th, 2015, he was recovered in the city of Gaziantep and he was detained. And on 14th of July 2015, he was suspected of having been affiliated with Daesh and he was deported back to the Netherlands, which appears to be his actual location and residence. Deportation verdict has been submitted and communicated to Netherlands and Belgium. In the aftermath of this development, Belgium demanded additional intelligence. On June the 6th, 2016, it was obvious that he was affiliated and involved in the conflict zones and he was wounded. That is the reason why he was deported. And this is the information that was communicated to Belgium. He was born in 1986, and we can call him a young person. And Belgium, unfortunately, attached no significance to this piece of information, and these incidents happened. Why do you think they did not pick up your intelligence? And particularly the Dutch say that your government did not alert them to the fact that he had jihadi tendencies. You have to identify whether these are foreign fighters or jihadists. The Netherlands or nor the Belgium seem to have understood what jihadist stands for. We have been calling the nations for a common stand against terrorism and many of the European member states failed to attach the significance that this call for action deserves. You met with Jewish groups here in Washington today. Uh, they must have asked you about this threat against Jews in Turkey. What did you tell them? How will you keep them safe? Very clearly, I must say that, as you so rightfully put, we had a meeting with the uh, representatives of the Jewish organizations this morning in D.C. We have a very significant number of Jewish uh, citizens, and they have always been safe and secure where they are in Turkey. They have their own synagogues and schools and media outlets, which have always been in security and safety. And from time to time, I get together with the rabbis, with the religious leaders, the leaders of the congregations, and I talk to them, and whenever a need arises, we try everything we can to meet those expectations and meet those needs. I am one of the first political leaders officially declaring that anti-Semitism is a crime. And I expect an official declaration that Islamophobia is a crime against humanity as well. And Islamophobia emerged from the Western countries, and this is a challenge that we all together need to surmount. We have French fighters within Daesh, we have German fighters in Daesh, we have Australian fighters in Daesh, and 22 countries out of the 19 countries feeding fighters into Daesh are EU member states. This is very meaningful, that's why we have to forge a very strong alliance with the EU member states. You came here three years ago, and there was a very warm meeting, a rose garden ceremony between you and President Obama, and there was a sense that Turkey, under your leadership, was committed to the fight in Syria, committed to democracy, uh, committed to all these issues that are important to the West and to the EU, obviously. This time, there seems to be a cooler reception, uh, a slightly, slightly more tension. You're not going to have a bilateral separate meeting with President Obama. Are you concerned about that and about the way relations seem to be deteriorating between yourself, your government, and the United States? We shouldn't be speaking about a prospective deterioration between the U.S. and uh, Turkey. And I'm a leader who wholeheartedly believes that U.S. will never allow that to happen. And through you, I must let all the audiences know, never respect such misinformation. Do you feel that there's a tension? Do you feel disappointed with the U.S. reaction to the war in Syria? Is the U.S. doing everything that you hoped it would do uh, to end this war? Well, let me put it this way. About the developments in Syria and in Iraq, the U.S. is always in the lead. And I believe 
a better accomplishment could have been cultivated not only in Iraq, but also in Syria. It still is possible. Therefore, we have to be a part of this coalition force, and uh, we have to work together and jointly for the protection of the territorial integrity of Syria and for the establishment of a long-lasting peace. I am not in a position to allow the handing over of some, some parts of Syria to a terrorist organization. I will never be forgiving of such a mistake if that mistake shall ever be made. Which particular terrorist organization do you mean? Daesh or, or who? YPG? Well, YPG, PYD. And if Daesh has an intention of that sort, of, but they do have an intention of that sort, they will never be allowed either. We don't discriminate between a good terrorist organization and an evil terrorist organization. A terrorist organization is evil in nature and none of them shall be allowed. Uh, you obviously have incredibly tense relations with Russia now. The blowing the plane out of the, out of the skies and the retaliation that Russia has done against Turkey. But can you tell me, what is your assessment of how much Russia has helped Bashar Assad? Russia, tabii böyle bir... Russia has provided the foundation that a tyrant such as Bashar needed, who has been exercising state-funded terrorism. Putin used to have different thoughts about the position of Assad in Syria. However, right now it seems like Mr. Putin has been going through a dilemma. We're talking about a tyrant, Assad, who's caused the death of 500,000 people, and I believe siding with a person like that will never be forgiven in the eyes of the history. History will remember you with the deeds that you have engaged in. If you were a good doer, you will be commemorated fondly. But if you took sides with the evil tyrants, you will be remembered not so fondly. Tell me how Turkey is going to enforce this deal that it's made with the EU regarding preventing more refugees coming into Europe coming into Greece. I must mention that Turkey is surrounded by a vast shoreline, and this shoreline is taken under surveillance within the utmost capabilities that we have with the Coast Guard. And the trespassing is not as frequent as it used to be. We've taken the necessary measures, similar to the measures taken by Greece around the islands in the Aegean. With the timely sharing of the intelligence, with a joint uh, cooperation with Greece, we can see a significant drop in the amount of refugees trying to cross over to the European continent. But I must underline one fact, as I have the opportunity. We're talking about the 3 million refugees accommodated in Turkey, 2.8 million of which are coming from Syria. These people are fleeing bombs and we had an open-door policy vis-a-vis -vis these people, we still can't shut these doors. If they will still need to come to Turkey, we will let them come to Turkey because we are not going to uh, pave the way to their demise. We have spent until so far $10 billion out of our own budget, but unfortunately we have only received $455 million from the international community. But I would like to announce something to the rest of the world and the US. There's a step that we need to take forward. On the northern part of Syria, we have to establish a secure zone, liberate it from terrorism entirely. We can build up homes for the refugees. And in this secure zone, Syrian citizens will be housed. Schools will be built for them. Offices for, will be built for them. They will be settled there, and they will no longer need to flee the Syrian uh, territory. And th we have that opportunity. And the refugees who are currently in Turkey will go back to Syria. The relevant uh, infrastructure will be built in a year, in a year and a half, and I'm very much determined, and I'm very ambitious. You've been saying this for a long time, Mr. President, ever since this war started. You've called for a safe zone in the north of Syria. Nobody has wanted to help you do that, and you haven't done it yourself. How are you going to do that? Well, this is something that I've communicated to my dear friend, President Obama. On the northern parts of Syria, we have identified a location. Our American friends know about that, and we know about that, and we can take these steps forward, and these uh, constructions can be completed in no time. And if we should do that, our Syrian friends will accept going back and settling there. And I'm uh, receiving the results of my deliberations with my counterparts around the world. Well, we'd be very interested to know the results, because up until now, the American administration has said no to a no-fly zone and no to a safe zone. Are you telling me that could change? Well, I'm keeping my hopes high. I still cross my fingers. I'm not in this barrier. 
And I have communicated these messages to uh, Chancellor Merkel, and she has openly declared that uh, she has a positive approach towards this uh, idea, and Obama wasn't negative towards this idea.